united will never be defeated. The students united will never be defeated. The students united will never be defeated. The students united will never be defeated. Woo! Woo! Thank you everyone for coming out here today. It's a very important issue that we're out here organizing for. So when I hear people say that what Doug Ford wants to do with this policy is defend the rights of students, well, I can't help but laugh. Because this is a government which has done more to eviscerate the rights of ordinary people than any previous government in recent memory. At York University, where he took away the democratic right to strike of teaching assistance, a right which workers fought and died for and then forced them back to work. In Toronto, where he became the first premier in this province's history to invoke the notwithstanding clause, to suspend the freedom of expression of the people in this city. And now here, on our campuses, where he's attempting to take away our democratic right to protest in order to create a safe space for far-right fascist speakers to spew their hatred on our campuses. And let me just say, don't believe for one minute the lies of these people who claim that it's them defending the freedom of speech, who claim that it's them defending civil liberties, because it's a lie. Just last weekend, in New York City, you had one of these fascist groups, the Proud Boys, running around Manhattan, targeting protesters, beating them within an inch of their lives, standing on their throats so that they couldn't breathe. And let me just ask you, where was the freedom of speech for those protesters? And I'll tell you where it was. It was thrown to the ground. It was beaten. It was trampled on by these fascist thugs who were the enemies of democracy and the enemies of civil liberties. It's these same people who have targeted our own club time and time again by scribbling Nazi graffiti on our posters, by using violent threats and intimidation to shut down our events. And then these people have the nerve to say that it's them who are the defenders of free speech, that it's them who are the defenders of civil liberty. Well, I'm no farmer, but I know bullshit when I smell it. These people do not fight for free speech. They hide behind free speech. They hide behind free speech so that they can smuggle their poisonous ideas into society. Let me just point out something that the labor movement and the socialist movement have been defending civil liberties and the freedom of speech for hundreds of years, long before any of these fakers learned what civil liberties were, learned what democratic rights were. And now these people are being given impunity by the Ford government to spew their venom on our campuses. And Doug Ford has made friends with these people. He shook hands with members of the Proud Boys during the campaign. Just a few weeks ago, he took a picture smiling next to Faith Goldie, a white nationalist. And when he was called out on it, he refused to condemn her and refused to condemn her views. And now, with this policy, what this government is doing is showing its utmost thanks to these villains for helping to get him elected. That's what this policy represents. But let me just say, it's no coincidence that these villains are crawling into society now because we live in a time of unprecedented crisis, of the decay of capitalism, 
which leads to crisis on all levels, economic, social, political, which gives rise to desperation on the parts of ordinary people, which gives rise to polarization, and which creates such monsters as Doug Ford, as Donald Trump in the United States, and now Bolsonaro in Brazil. But we don't have to accept this. There's no reason why we should have to wait four years to bring down this regime. Because if Doug Ford isn't going to play by the rules, if the far right isn't going to play by the rules, then why the fuck should we? Excuse my French. Because the problems we have in society can't just be solved at the ballot box. The problems we have in society can't just be solved by writing to your local MPP or by appealing to the moral sensibilities of the Conservative Party. The problems that we have will be decided and solved in the streets, in the schools, in the workplaces, by mobilizing millions of ordinary people to grind Ontario to a halt with sit-ins, with occupations, and with strikes. And we'll make it so that it's Doug Ford begging us for mercy and not the other way around. And to those people with the power to make this happen, the student union leaders and the trade union leaders, let me appeal to you. Don't just sit in your offices. Don't just wait for something to happen. Because people out here, ordinary people, working class people in the real world are suffering. And we can't afford to wait any longer with this government in power. And if you're not going to do it, if you're not going to lead the fight against this government, then we'll replace you with people that will. People that will lead a fight against this government and to transform society and to represent our class, the working class, as well as the Conservative Party represents their class, the millionaires and billionaires who run this province and run this country and run this world. We'll fight them. Because let's be perfectly clear, there is something wrong in society. There is something wrong with capitalism. And let me tell you something, that it's not the immigrants to blame. It's not the refugees to blame. It's not the Muslims to blame. It's the millionaires and billionaires who thrust this crisis onto our shoulders, which are to blame. Now what the right wing have done is they've peddled their lies to place the blame on scapegoats rather than the people who are truly responsible for this crisis. And we're not gonna fight these people. We're not gonna fight the right wing with more of the same. We're not gonna fight them with the politics of the status quo with the politics of Justin Trudeau and of Hillary Clinton. More of the same. We're not going to fight them with the methods of the liberals who say that it's simply a matter of having a polite, civil debate with these people who are actively calling for violence against our communities, against our co-workers, against our family members. How do you fight a right-wing anti-establishment message it's not with more establishment politics. You fight it with a left-wing anti-establishment message, which is what we need to build. By advancing a socialist message, by appealing to working class people to transform society, by taking the monopolies and taking the multinational corporations, which have driven us into miserable conditions, into the hands of ordinary people and building a society, a socialist society, which be run not on the basis of profit, not on the basis of corporate greed, but on the basis of human need. A truly democratic society for the people, of the people, and by the people.
And my friends, we have history on our side. Let me say with absolute certainty that we will transform society. And if we organize, and if we mobilize in our vast numbers, we will bring down the Ford regime and build a society and build a world which is free of lies, free of divisions, free of corruption, and free of capitalism. So I encourage you to join us in that fight.